meant to protect our skin from the sun, from SPF 30, 50, and even 130. The choices are endless. And these days, there are even pills that claim to be able to block out harmful UV rays. So in this episode of Talking Point, we're going to delve deep into what exactly is in our sunscreen. And with so many options out there, I'm wondering, which one is best for me? A recent survey shows that more than half of Singaporeans between the ages of 18 and 79 do not take measures to protect themselves from the sun. Even amongst those who do, less than one in four use sunscreen. So why aren't we applying sunscreen? I'm hitting the streets to find out. Do you use any sunblock or sunscreen every day? I don't like the feeling. It, oh, you don't? It becomes, because I perspire, uh. so you get very sticky. But I didn't okay. like, have time to like, okay. put on sunblock. Would you normally use sunscreen? Yeah, in preparation yeah. for a day that we know we'll be out in the sun for a long time. Although I know we should be using it every day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't use sunblock. I'm yeah. a rugby player. I play rugby, I play hot sun, so I don't use sunblock. Why not? Not into all of those things. So it seems the top reasons why people avoid using sunscreen is because they don't like how it feels and they're not too concerned about the effects of the sun. I want to know why people are so blasé about sunscreen and if we even need it. So I'm meeting Dr. Yu Yit Wing, whose team was behind the first study on sun safety habits in Singapore. I play rugby, I play hot sun, so I don't need sunblock. Dr. Yu is, of course, a firm believer in sunscreen and uses it daily. There are several misconceptions. Yeah. Uh, so we, we know that uh, usually the males or guys who are active, mm -hmm. they believe that sunscreen are not necessary and, and that's really not true. There are the few various components of the sunlight mm. uh, consisting of visible light, UVA light and UVB light. So all this, especially UVB and UVA light, can penetrate the skin. They can damage our uh, skin cells. And with time goes by, as we accumulate all these damages from this UV radiation, the skin cancer can develop later on in their life. Help me understand, there's UVA, UVB. What's the difference between them? UVB has a high energy, so it causes more direct damage uh -huh. to the skin's genetic material. UVA, although have a lower energy, they penetrate deeper. They generate a lot of oxidation, which can then react with the skin material, causing aging in the process. Now, how bad can this damage be? I have a photo here. Now, this is after even years of damage. We can see that there's a lot more pigmentation damaging. Some of this, we have what we call benign skin tumours that are, are arising already. Mm -hmm. And we still see a lot of wrinkles. But surface. all these dark spots, these are a result of sun damage? Yeah, thickening of the skin. Okay. Now, my second photo is a bit uh, scary. So oh, it shows a ouch. photo of skin cancer. Yikes. This photo shows a very flashy lump. Wow, that actually literally looks like a burn. Like you take something and you burn the skin. How concerned should we be about skin cancer? What are the rates here in Singapore? Skin cancer is the six leading mm. cancers for among males and the seven leading cancers among females. So it's quite a significant problem. And often this is a result of uh, years of accumulated sun exposure that people ignore when they were much younger. <sighs> You know, I never thought that the sun could have such horrifying effects on my skin. I mean, I regularly use sunblock when I'm going to be out for a long day shooting or when I'm heading to the beach. But I admit I don't use it regularly. And after seeing those horrific pictures, I want to know the condition of my own skin. So I'm going to get my skin assessed by a professional. Hello. Dr. Ben Yim's interests lie in anti-aging and hyperpigmentation, which I've learned are common side effects of overexposure to UV radiation. Hi, doctor. Normally, in patients, I like to compare an exposed area of the skin okay. versus an unexposed area of the same, uh, the, right. the same part of the body, right? So when we look at sun-damaged skin, for example, what we notice is an uneven discoloration of the skin, mm -hmm. right? And the skin is darker. It's okay. more hyperpigmented. That would make sense because this is often in the shade, right? And this, this is the one getting all the sun. That's correct. And uh, then, of course, the next thing we look at is the wrinkles on the skin. Okay. And if one were to run the finger down across, there is also a difference in the texture of the skin versus that of the 
undamaged skin. So it is smoother okay. on this side, but it is rougher and drier on this side. And Steve, uh, you've also got some signs of uh, long-term sun damage. For example, oh. this little area here is called guttate hypomelanosis. And this, is, this represents permanent sun damage. So you've lost the ability to produce pigment in this spot. How common is it for people to have these spots? I think it's quite a common occurrence, yes. Okay. Especially in this part of the world where the sun intensity is quite high and when people do not regularly apply mm. sunblocks or sunscreens. But one or two spots, like here, I see another one or two here. Yes. I mean, that's okay. When should I worry? These spots are harmless, but we know that long-term sun damage causes skin cancer. We want to make sure we prevent ourselves yeah. from getting to that stage by using sunscreens. So in a way, it's never too late to start applying sunscreen. That's correct. But picking a suitable sunscreen is not as easy as it looks. With so many options available in the market now, I wonder, what should I be using? To find out, I conduct an experiment, putting a volunteer under the hot sun. I've learned what the sun's done to my skin. I want to start on my journey to better sun safety, but the options available are dizzying. There are SPF values from as low as 30 to a whopping 130, and something called PA ratings. I found PA values that range from PA++ to PA++++. And something else I've discovered, the higher the SPF, the more expensive the sunscreen. An SPF 30 sunscreen could go for as low as $11.90, compared to $34.80 for around the same amount of sunscreen with an SPF rating of 130. Now that's almost triple the price. But wait a minute, it's not just the sunscreens, there are also sunblocks, sprays, and sticks. So how do I even choose one? And are higher SPF sunscreens really worth my money? Aesthetic doctor Rachel Hall, who also runs a blog offering skincare tips, is going to break it down for me. And what better place to learn more about sunscreen than at the beach? So help us understand, because very often we see all these different kinds of lotions. Some are called sunblock, some are called sunscreen. Actually, what's the difference? So sunblocks are a type of sunscreen uh -huh. and sunscreens basically protect the skin from UV rays by either reflecting it or by converting it to heat energy and dissipating it. Sunblocks contain organic filters, basically zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, where they reflect the UV rays from the sun. So the sunblock is, as it says, like literally uh, blocking the sun, literally putting a filter it. and blocking the sun. That's right. The sunscreen... Sunscreens, on the other hand, absorb the UV rays and convert it to heat energy. So when it comes to the numbers then, I mean like this one says it's SPF 30, this one says it's SPF 50 plus, not just 50, 50 plus. I mean, again, what do the numbers mean? SPF value refers to sun protection factor or it's UVB ray protection. So we use an equation to calculate this, if I could just show you on the iPad. Yeah, sure. So SPF equals time taken for a patch of your skin to turn red with sunscreen and it's divided over the time taken for your skin to also turn red uh, without sunscreen. So in theory, if it takes 10 minutes for you to get naturally sunburnt under the sun, applying an SPF 30 sunscreen would prolong this effect to 300 minutes of 5 hours. I also see here on the label, it says PA++. What, what is PA? So PA refers to a sunscreen's UVA protection, and it right. from 1 plus to 4 plus. Uh, the higher the number of pluses, the greater the protection you're getting from UVA rays. I notice also that very often, the higher the SPF rating, the more expensive it is. Is it really worth the money? Well, shall we do an experiment to find out about that? An experiment? Yes. It's 1 o'clock, and the sun is blazing. To show us if we should splurge on high-value SPF, Dr. Ho has applied sunscreen with three different SPF levels on our volunteer Brian's back. It's been marked out with a grid. Each square has a sunscreen with different protection levels applied to it, 30, 50 and 130. And the fourth square has been left unprotected as a control. One hour later and we're back to check on Brian. 
Hey, Brian, how's it going? So I really can't see any difference on his back. I mean, it was SPF 30, 50 and 130, but visibly, I can't tell the difference. That's not surprising because when a sunscreen's SPF increases beyond 30, yeah. the additional protection is very marginal. Now, when a sunscreen's SPF is 30, it offers you about 97% protection against UVB rays. But when the SPF increases to 50, you get about 98% protection. Mm -hmm. And when the SPF increases to 100, you get about 99% protection. It's very negligible increase in protection. That's why uh, in, in when you test it out, the actual uh, outcomes are very similar. So why then do they bother selling you know, things that are beyond SPF 50? So the sunscreen's protection that you get is also dependent on how much you apply. But most studies show that most people, they apply less than that amount. Uh, and if you were to apply, say, half the amount, the kind of sunscreen protection will be about half of what's stated on your sunscreen label. So that's where sunscreens with higher SPF come in. It can compensate for that less okay. than adequate amount that's applied. Okay, okay. But if I'm applying it correctly, then actually... SPF 30 is actually more than or enough. Or even SPF 30. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay, right. okay. We all enjoy a day at the beach, hanging out in the sun, and I now know for a fact that SPF 30 is more than enough to keep me safe, if I use it correctly. Which leaves me only to wonder if it makes a difference whether I use a cream, a gel, a stick, or spray. La Roche-Posay has one of the widest range of sunscreen products in the market and I'm hoping that Gloria, their product manager, can tell me if one kind of sunscreen is really better than the other. So Gloria, there are sprays, there are uh, lotions, there are creams and I even brought my own uh, roll-on stick, you know. I mean, what's the difference between them and are some better than the others? In general, there are many different formats, as mm -hmm. you can already tell. Even within the cream format, for example, okay. it also depends on what you're using for and your skin condition. Whether you have dry skin or oily skin, for example. Then you have your fluid, which is for uh, like a lighter texture. And then for some people, they might prefer a mist, which is uh, a lot lighter and it's faster to apply. If I'm yeah. going out to the beach for a hot sunny day, which would keep me from getting burned more effectively. We tend to recommend avoiding relying completely on sticks as well as uh, mm -hmm. mist. The reason for that is because it's very common for consumers to miss out on certain areas of their face. Right. Um, whereas when you apply uh, using a fluid or using a cream, that complete coverage is uh, uh, something that you can be more sure of. For example, like behind your ears or uh, uh, behind your neck, for example, these are areas that are very common for individuals to miss out. What about the amount that I use? In general, we do recommend for, uh, for users to apply 10ml mm -hmm. um, for their face and neck. So I'll show you what that looks like in terms of amount. Okay. So you can see here. Using... Oh, you're still going. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's a very light texture. That's yeah. a lot. Yep, exactly. So maybe you can try now using the spray. The spray, okay. One, two, three. We've done studies and many consumers, they would spray two or three times on the face. Yeah. But you've done that now and you're Five, barely getting six, there. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 23, 24, 25. Not quite 25, there yet, not but there yet. almost. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're there. That was about 30 pumps of the spray. So that is the amount I'm supposed to be using to on get... On your face. On my face only? Yes. Wow, okay, so, so just going, just going spraying like two or three times then really doesn't offer exactly, much protection. Exactly, exactly. But nowadays, all the modern cosmetics come with some kind of SPF in it, you know, in the foundations, the moisturizers. Are those good enough? So for foundations with SPF properties, yeah. um, we, we first need to understand that they are ultimately foundations. And therefore, I would still recommend that if you are um, applying a foundation with SPF, that shouldn't be the only protection you have. As a general rule of thumb, I uh, would recommend that after you apply your sunscreen, you allow it to set for about 15 to 20 minutes okay. before you apply uh, you know, your, your foundation. Even if you are going about in your house in the day, uh, it's still important for you to be applying your sunscreen. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying even if I'm at home, in the house, I should apply sunscreen too? Yes, but both what? indoors and outdoors. Oh, but why? I'm, not, I'm indoors, I'm not exposed to the sun. 
So many people might not know this, but when you're indoors and when you're next to a window, for example, UVA rays can still pass through. Similarly, another fun fact that uh, many people do not know is that you should still apply your sunscreen even when it's raining, uh, even when right. it's a cloudy day, for example. It's okay. very counterintuitive, but it's the truth. UVA rays can still pass through clouds. Therefore, your skin is still undergoing that skin damage if you are not protected with UVA and UVB protection. Who knew I'd need to use sunscreen on a cloudy, rainy day and indoors as well? And it turns out the type of sunscreen I use doesn't matter. As much as how you apply the sunscreen and how much to use. But as I'm about to find out, there may be an easier way to get that much-needed sun protection. So, there are pills I can take that will actually protect me from the harmful effects of UV rays, which kind of means I can eat my sunscreen? Yikes! I've been investigating the different kinds of sunscreen available in the market and I thought I'd seen everything until I came across this article. So, there are pills I can take that will actually protect me from the harmful effects of UV rays, which kind of means I can eat my sunscreen? Yikes! UV blocking pills, or more commonly known as edible sunscreen, have been around for over a decade. With over 20 brands available in the market today, it's no surprise that the study found Asia to be a significant market for such products. UV blocking pills have also been trending among some beauty bloggers. I'm going to meet one of them. Ong Fei Jing has been taking oral sun protection pills for the past five years, and she swears by it. I started is well actually I wanted to go Bangkok so I was okay. like online searching you know how strong the UVs are there like mm. uh, how hot is it right so when I came back and I realized like my pigments are a little darker and mm. it starts to surface out mostly on my face so you are totally convinced that these yes. pills add protection to your skin after taking the pills for so many years actually my pigments and spots it doesn't get darker so easily so when you take these pills, does that mean you don't have to apply any sunblock or sunscreen? No, no, no. You still have to apply your sun sunscreen and you still have to touch up your sunscreen like every three to four hours in Singapore. Then, then what's the point? What, what, how it is this different? Two, it works two ways. So it's double protection? It's double protection. How much would a box of pills like these cost? The orange pills, you can actually easily get them in the pharmacy. It's okay. 60 pills in a bottle for about $50. This will be more expensive than about 100 to 120. Pretty expensive. I mean, that's easily... I don't know, 10 times more than uh, normal a sunscreen. tube of normal Yeah, sunscreen. you can apply, yeah. but it's different because it's on the face. Yeah. So to me, I'm, I'm all willing to invest. So Feijing honestly believes that these pills work for her, but I'm curious to find out if there's any kind of scientific evidence to support this. Helping me out is Dr. Eugene Tan. He's a senior consultant at the National Skin Centre who is deeply interested in how light affects the skin. How do these sunscreen pills work? So, technically, these are not sunscreen pills. What they do is that they contain potent antioxidants that neutralise the after effects of the sun reaching our skin. Okay, so it doesn't work like a sunscreen, as in the kind of lotion that I apply on by deflecting the, the sun rays. Yes, that's right. They but do not deflect and they do not absorb ultraviolet lights. It's more of a neutralizer of the damage. When ultraviolet light hits our skin, what happens is that free radicals are being generated. And these free radicals are very dangerous because they can damage our skin cells. So what okay. these pills do is that they neutralize and mop up these free radicals so that they are unable to exert any damage on the DNA in our skin cells. So Steve, let me give you an analogy of how antioxidants actually help to protect our skin from free radicals. So imagine if you have two slices of apples. You okay. know, normally these slices of apple, when left in the open, they will turn brown mm -hmm. because of oxidation from free radicals. So what happens is that, imagine if you have one slice of apple that is just left open on its own, and the other slice of apple, you actually coat it with some lemon juice which acts as a protective antioxidant layer. After a period of time, 
you will most likely see that the slice of apple that's uncoated will turn brown from oxidation, whereas the other slice of apple that is coated with protective lemon juice, yeah. which is an antioxidant, will most likely retain its original colour or turn just minimally brown. So from this analogy, you can see how antioxidants can potentially protect our skin from the harmful effects of free radicals. Do we need this kind of protection? Generally, I would say no. I mean, most of us will not require uh, this kind of uh, okay. oral sunscreen pills. Who then are the people that would require pills like this? These pills will be beneficial yeah. in people who are highly sensitive to the sun. One of the examples will be what we call polymorphic light eruption. In this condition, Ooh. itchy rashes uh -huh. and lumps and bumps, they are usually red or it can be vesicular and blistering, appear on sun-exposed sites on the skin, such as the forearms. And okay. this happens after a short exposure in the sun. For most of us, if we can be out in the sun for like 30 minutes to an hour, we are okay. Mm -hmm. But for these people who are highly sensitive to the sun, you know, all it takes is perhaps like 10 to 15 minutes of sun exposure, Ooh. and subsequently they will develop these very itchy rashes. Unless you have very sensitive skin, there's really no need to pop these pricey UV blocking pills. Regular sunscreen would suffice. You know, the skin is the largest organ in the human body, so I'm a bit surprised that many of us aren't too concerned about it. But now that I know just how damaging the sun can be on my skin, I see the importance of taking care of it. And so, I'm gonna make sure I stay protected. Now this, this fluid sunscreen here, this has become my top pick as it's easy to put on, not too sticky, not too oily. And all I really need is an SPF rating of no more than 30. But more importantly, I have to make sure I use enough of it. At least 10 ml for my face and neck. And also to remember to use it rain or shine, indoors or outdoors.